Hey, Jero 200, summer 2019. How are you guys? So, um, this is how it's going to roll, and this is my lecture. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, give you a lecture on the content of the first week, but also give you uh, some hints on how to again navigate this course and do well and make sure you have an A. Okay, because everybody wants to get an A in this class. Plus, you know what? You're going to really, really find this class super useful. Um, time's going to come, you got to help your parents and your grandparents, and you might as well be a super informed advocate for them. Um, and uh, the, uh, I, I think also you will, uh, where you're going to find is no matter what your um, career track is at USC, your major, um, everything in this course is going to be applicable, uh, whether it be business, law, um, cinematic arts, um, or if you're a biologist and you think you might want to go to med school, it all applies. Okay. Alrighty, so um, this is the page that always opens, okay? Uh, again, this is the team right here. Uh, we are co-instructors, Julie and I. We've been doing this together for a long time. Um, Kim Liu and Maria both have their master's degrees at, from USC, and they are really skilled. This is the announcement that I sent out yesterday. Um, this is the, the how-to video, how, how to get an A. And again, you see over here, there's all these useful how-to videos, okay? And I'm just um, uh, pointing this out to you, okay? So it's not only how to navigate a course and get an A, so I posted the same video right in there, but how to use Turnitin, how to avoid plagiarism, how to post <clears throat> in the discussion boards, how to check your grades, things like that. It's all in here, okay? So if you just click on it like I did right there, okay? And it takes you right here, and here it is. How do you get an A, okay? Um, it talks about everything you need to do, okay? And, um, and again, the, you know, the key thing with the discussions, people forget you have to have one post of substance, okay, and three posts with your classmates, all right, to get full credit every discussion, okay. Some weeks we're going to have three discussions because this is a summer school class, okay. Some are going to be two. You just got to follow the schedule that we're going to look at in a second, okay. All righty, we come over here. This describes for you how to upload um, your three Turnitin documents. Um, this is to ensure you don't plagiarize because our university is really cracking down on this. Um, turn it in will identify anything. Okay, uh, it's an amazing bit of software. Um, this tells you what to do with the posting of the blackboards um, and um, other types of things. Okay, you can look at your old quizzes. I think went over this yesterday. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go into the content. And I'm actually looking at this in student view, so this is what you would uh, normally look like, look at when you're looking at it, okay? Um, okay, so we can go further down here in the week. For example, I can look at uh, week two, and uh, we have, you know, lots of information here about our discussion of cancer. Uh, these are the readings right here, okay? Um, uh, some of these are just images, okay? Um, we draw a lot from figures. We want you to interpret figures. My video will go right in here for this part. It's not there, okay? Um, and um, um, here's the quiz right here. Um, you're more than welcome to work ahead, but you've got to stay on schedule, okay? Um, the quizzes are due. You know, um, the, the week when they first um, are uh, made available, okay? Um, all righty. So you see there's no discussion, okay? Discussions will roll out. Again, they're open for a week and then they close. So you can't get back and, and, and do discussions if you've missed them, okay? All righty. So I'm going to go back here, okay, again to the weekly assignments. And I'm going to scroll down to week one, okay? And as you see right here, the discussion is right in there, okay? Um, and uh, you're more than welcome to post as many times as you want. Okay, so I posted in here yesterday. Okay, so we click on this, and you see that's my original um, uh, prompt that I did. I created a thread, and then I can respond to this right here. Okay, so I said, shoot, I'm 63 years old, June 30th. I met Julie when she was 20, and I was 26 and a half. We have an awesome marriage. This is my greatest achievement because I get nostalgic with my best friend. All right. That is spoken from the heart. Um, some more background about Julia. Okay, you see here in the background, um, USC Law School. This is um, uh, her um, diploma that she got. 
from uh, being a member of California Supreme Court. Okay, so she was a serious attorney for many years. Okay, corporate attorney for a big law firm for eight years, and then she was managing counsel for about another eight years. Um, uh, your lives change, and this is all what this this course is all about. Uh, your life course will change. Okay, and I'm going to go backward in my browser here, and I'm going to go backwards again. And so your jobs may change, and that's the point of my discussion right there. All right. Okay. So my video is going to go right here. What I want to do now is I want to take a look um, at the uh, um, upcoming assignment. Okay. You can see that it is loading. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over um, the key points that you need to do and how to succeed in looking at this. Okay. So I'll put my picture over here. I'm going to go full screen right there. Okay. It's appropriate that uh, I do this, okay. um, and um, it looks like I belong with the rest of these old folks because I am old. You know, I guess what? Um, it's uh, like the old age truck; you never see it coming. And uh, um, the, the reality is, just because I happen to look like this and I'm getting older, uh, you never stop being that person who you guys are right now. So it, up in here, I'm still that 22 year old person when everything kind of came together for me okay and you can look at your parents grandparents and they're the same way alrighty so so um, in this particular week okay we're supposed to do um, the overview okay the introduction you go through trends one through five okay and so that's what we do with the first lecture all right so this um, forward right here is really an excellent kind of overview of what's going on okay and um, the reason why I, I, I just want to highlight this, because this is kind of, like I said, it's an overview, and then each of the chapters um, goes into greater detail, okay? So it's, I think it's a given you understand that people are living longer, okay? Um, and in some cases, they're healthier, so that means they're going to live a really, really long time, okay? Um, so the key thing is, is society has not really been ready for this, okay? Okay. Um, it affects our economy, okay? Um, it affects the sustainability of families. Um, uh, you are gonna get caught, most likely, uh, being a caregiver for your parents and your children, and the uh, kind of economic and uh, physiological stress that that, is, that has to deal with. Um, our country is ahead of the curve on this, okay? But um, but it's a, it's a big global issue, and. You're going to learn about countries that are prepared, are in the works for, for preparing, and a lot of countries that are getting blindsided. All right. Now, this particular uh, publication was through a collaboration of the World Health Organization, World Data Bank, okay, um, and the US, U.S. National Institute of Health, okay. This is a subset, the National Institute of Aging, this part of the National Institute of Health, okay. And... Um, uh, I, this is particularly relevant because your first uh, critical thinking assignment, okay, your three-page paper actually asks you to go in and interpret some data from World Data Bank that is relevant to what we're going to be discussing in this first week, all right? So it's all kind of tied together, what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Um, in terms of things like um, the economy, okay, uh, what... Um, our country is really ill-prepared for, and a lot of countries are just going to get blindsided about, is the cost in terms of care, what are called non-communicable chronic diseases. Um, this is a disease of survivors, okay? You've lasted a long time. You've beat off all the infections, um, and maybe you've been somehow handling your diabetes somewhat, and then these long-lasting diseases that cost you as an individual and your health insurance and thus society enormous amounts of money are things like cardiovascular disease. And now dementia and Alzheimer's, as we make inroads with cardiovascular disease and cancer and diabetes, you're seeing more and more dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And, and so these, these are very costly, costly things. Okay. Now, um, as I'm going through this, uh, I am also going to give you some insight um, in terms of how to best deal with the readings. 
and complete the quizzes. Okay, so the um, the reality is you just got to know where to look. So being able to come through here and just kind of summarize what's going on and be familiar with the, what topics are being discussed and where they're being discussed in the readings so that you can go back to it. So you just open up multiple browsers and go about your thing, okay? Um, all righty. So again, this is just the intro, and, um, and it goes over a lot of the issues, okay? Um, uh, I think it's important to think that it's a global issue because uh, since, since places like the Davis School of Gerontology are coming up with strategies uh, in terms of uh, 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 society issues and, and coming up with business opportunities and how we're going to help in, uh, governments and individuals in terms of caregiving um, and uh, for things like uh, uh, financial support, all that is all, um, you know, we're on, on the cusp, on the cutting edge of figuring that out. And a lot of countries hire people from our country to come help them get it together. Okay. So when we look here, what I'm going to do right now, it's a little too big for me. All right. Um, um, we look at some numbers here. Okay. So um, we, we see that, you know, we have 500 million people in 2006. This is a 2017 publication, um, but it takes a long time to gather the data. So you'll see um, different kind of dates. And this one is after looking at 2006. And um, 500 million people at 65 and older. And, you know, in the not too distant future, okay, so in uh, 10 and a half years, okay, yeah, we're projected to have 1 billion people that are 65 and older. So in uh, a substantial percentage, okay. And, um, and like I was talking about, you know, um, developed countries, financially stable countries like ourselves and Canada and Japan, um, they have maybe a slightly better handle of things, but um, developing countries, um, they're benefiting right now from uh, the different types of biomedical interventions that, that include things like vaccinations, like antibiotics for the early infections that used to cause people to have um, short lifespans. And, um, and then also things like sanitation, okay? And uh, better handling of water and food handling and things like that so that people are living longer, better nutrition so they're living longer. But their infrastructure is not ready for this massive increase. And that's kind of the point of this chapter, okay? All right, so as you... You know, you go through this, um, um, again, look at the highlights, okay? And, and uh, so I want you to go ahead and read through it, through it for sure. Um, but uh, the readings make it easy on you by having these bullet points right here, okay? Um, and so uh, when we look at, you know, where the data is being drawn from, I already mentioned that, you know, the different things like the World Data Bank, okay? The census and things like that. Um, and we... We see uh, again that the life expectancy is increasing, um, is in 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 the biggest impact is in these developing countries that are not ready for it. Okay, um, what is the the uh, most rapidly rising age group? People over the age of eighty five. Okay, this is the oldest old, and um, and uh, people are living a long time, and there's serious financial consequences. And, and and not only in terms of these chronic diseases that we're talking about, but uh, you know an important thing to remember is the uh, individual economy. Okay, um, when we look at um, uh, you know things like um, social security. Okay, um, you know uh, our governments didn't anticipate that people would be paying would be living so long, and now they have to pay into the social security system for such a long period of time, okay? So this is a major political thing that we hear as well. Um, all you have to do is a little bit of different types of online reading, and you know it's a big deal, and it's always a big deal in terms of, um, of um, uh, politics. And so what's happening is we're expected to, to work longer and somehow be competitive, you know? You know I have to be competitive uh, with somebody who's 20 and 30 years of age and who has a lot more energy, um, a lot less physical problems, and um, 
And, and yeah, that's the way of the world. So uh, we're going to learn about uh, delaying your retirement like I'm going to be doing until I'm 72, okay? And it's because of, um, of uh, my uh, overall um, uh, ability to finance my, my old age, okay? All right, so focus in on those, um, those key bullet points right there, okay? All right, so then we look in here, okay? Um, we're looking at, we're going to start talking about uh, global aging, okay? And again, um, the 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 uh, triumph of public health, medical advancement, okay? Um, but also things that 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 um, that we didn't anticipate, okay? So what's happening is um, uh, we have these giant um, populations of older people. And it, it affects the economy, okay? So now what, in what way? So we got to take a look down here, okay? Um, we, we, um, we realize, okay, that, and we're going to talk, we have a whole section about personal investment, that, that uh, the countries cannot finance our old age, that it's up to us, okay? There used to be a thing called a pension. Now, a, f a few government types of employment um, finance your pension where you retire and you will be paid like 80% of your salary or 90% of your salary depending on the agency until the day you die okay that could be 30 40 years you know that's that's a lot and so a lot of you know private companies have have eliminated these these uh, what are called defined pensions um, and uh, they're still in place for if you're a member of Congress if you work for city government if they're still in place for firefighters, still in place for police officers, all these types of government positions. The rest of us have to invest our own money. So you have to take a portion of your salary, okay? And they, they, here's just an example, and we want you to kind of start thinking about it. If you were able to put away in your 20s, okay, um, uh, say two to $3,000 a year, by the time you're ready to retire, you would have close to a million dollars, okay? Um, if you delay it to when you're 40, then you'd need to put in more. But still, at age 40, um, you have close to a million when you're ready to retire at age 70. Okay, these are like important, important strategies that you need to think about. Okay, all right. So that's kind of that wake-up call right there. So, um, so what's going on here in terms of the dynamics of our populations? Now, I like to use in the quizzes. These graphs. I want you to be able to interpret these graphs. Okay, so um, we're looking here. Okay, we're looking at aging populations. And we're looking at transitions. Okay, and it says a real large print here. Okay, people age 65 will outnumber uh, children under age five. Okay, um, it's a combination of people living longer. Okay, so redu reduce mortality. Okay, and then it's also uh, the other part of that combination is that um, uh, people are having less children, so reduced fertility. And so this lack of replacement rate really imp really impacts the economy, okay? Um, if you're trying to you, you know, open up your own business, it's, it's harder to find workers. And this is why we had uh, immigration policies where we're trying to get the best workers uh, to help us out, okay? All right, let's take a look at when this is going to happen. All right, so um, in this first figure, figure one, young children and older people as a percentage of the global population, okay? So here I am right here. Uh, I was born in 1956, okay? And back then, you know, the baby boom, there was a ton of young people and not that many old people as a percentage of the population. Um, you can see how this has gradually shifted. People are having less children, people are living longer, and as a result, um, we now see, here we are um, at uh, 2019 right here, and we see we've blown right by it. So it was around 2017 this transition occurred where there were more people over the age of 65 than there were people age 5. And this has a huge sociological impact. You're going to start seeing a lot more businesses that cater to this group than you do that cater to this group. Okay? All righty. And that's something really important to conceptualize, okay? Now, in terms of countries being ready for this, okay, um, 
you know, we've learned along the way. You know, Japan um, uh, uh, achieved this uh, um, uh, aging population um, faster than we did. And, um, however, so, some countries went about it pretty slowly, okay? Um, and we see right here, um, we're looking at um, just kind of our readout, okay? So we want to look at the number of years for the population age 65 to increase from 7% of the population to 14% of the population. Okay, so um, this happened in France um, over a long period of time, and it happened a long time ago, okay? So they had a, a long time to um, adapt sociologically, politically, and to hopefully create a better infrastructure. Same thing with Sweden. Over an 85-year period from this um, kind of ancient history of time period to 1975, um, you see us, we were a younger nation, a, a nation of immigrants, and it happened um, a, a little more quickly, and it happened later um, in his history right here, okay? You see Japan, okay, happened pretty quickly, so they had to adapt real quickly, okay? It happened in 26 years. All right. Um, so these are developed countries, okay? These are countries that have a serious economic infrastructure that was able to adapt and handle this, okay? So now, you know, we look down here, and these are the developing countries, okay? Chile, okay? Yes, China was considered a developing country. Um, it's got, it's such a big country, so it have, has, has pockets that are so advanced, but it has other pockets that are not, okay? Um, we look at Colombia, we look at Tunisia, Jamaica, boom, 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 Singapore, okay? And, um, you know, unlike these other countries that had plenty of time to adapt, they're having to adapt really quickly to this changing dynamic of having older population. And they're not set up for it. They're not financially set up for it as a society. Okay. All right. So um, what increases the life expectancy? So we were talking about this, okay? Um, we see the life expectancy in Japan is approaching 82 years of age, okay? We're in the late 70s in the United States. We were at 78 years of age. We actually had a drop in life expectancy last year for the first time in 40 years because of the opioid epidemic, which is really tragic, okay? All right, so what impacts the life expectancy, okay? Um, and the dynamics of the aging population that we were looking at, okay? Um, we call it the dependency ratio, you know, um, are there more older people that are relying on you um, as a worker to help them out, or are there more younger people? All right, so what we see here is we see this shift um, from high to low fertility, all right? You're having less babies, all right? Um, my wife and I, Julia, we were just like you in this way, in this way and that we had to get ourselves together as a couple financially, and we had to wait. We had to wait till we were financially secure before we had children. We have two kids. Um, we're not even approaching that two-person replacement rate anymore uh, because it's so hard on you, okay? In addition, um, we see uh, this steady increase um, in life expectancy at birth. So people are living a lot longer, okay? So right in here, um, there's uh, a discussion of this, okay? Um, we talked about why people are living longer. We used to get infections, and now... Um, we survive all these factions because of modern medicine, and we're dealing with what are called non-communicable chronic diseases of aging, okay? Diabetes, heart disease, um, things like that, okay? So we can look at this dynamic here. It's called a survivalship curve, okay? And if we started with 100 people on our sample, okay, um, we see at the turn of the century, 1901, um, we didn't have uh, vaccinations, Okay, we didn't have antibiotics, and so out of the blocks, boom, you died, okay? By age 10, 20% uh, of the population was dead, okay? Um, in 2003, that's not the case because we can vaccinate, antibiotics, surgery, whatever it is, people are surviving. You know, you have just maybe a 1% drop right here, okay? Uh, you see here, uh, still a pretty steady decline, so that 50% of the people that were born Okay, in 1901, in our sample, 50%, we could call it 1 million, so now, um, so 500,000 people, 
okay, are dead, and we see where, where is the 50%, okay, right there, boom, okay, so you have a 50% survivor to 65 years of age, okay, uh, fast forward to 2003, 50% of the population, okay, is surviving all the way to in their mid-80s, okay, so this is a pretty dramatic shift, and um, it has you know, a significant impact on society. All righty. Um, we're looking at the um, life expectancy, okay? So you can make a calculation now of how long people are going to live, um, depending on when they were born, okay? So, um, again, I was right here, okay? So, um, so my life expectancy, okay, uh, was right there, okay? So on average, it was about, you know, 66 years of age, something like that. I'm knocking on the door, my friends, okay? Um, now we come over here to, you know, when you guys were born, okay? Um, 2001, right here. And you can see that your life expectancy is 78 for men and in the um, mid-80s for women. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we see, as I was talking about, this goes into more detail now, the, the rising numbers of the oldest old, okay? And, um, and how that is being uh, played out globally is, is very, very important. All right, so you can read through this right here, all right, and, um, and look at the bullet points, and then we come in here, okay, and we say um, there's this projected increase in global population going from 2005 to 2030, okay, on a percentile basis, okay, um, because of everything we're doing in terms of nutrition, in terms of lifestyle, we're all exercising, um, amazing medical interventions, look at the dramatic increase in centenarians that we're going to have, people over 100 years of age going from 2005 to 2030, okay, we're going to see a 400% increase in the number of those people. All right, we see here, okay, 150% increase in the number of people that are going to be 85 and older. We see right here, we're going to have a little over 100% increase in the number of people that are 65 and older, All right? So this is something that you can expect in your world. All right, so if we all live longer, right here, okay, there are some things that are not so great, okay? So um, we look at over the age of 65, and we see that um, about 1 in 8 to 1 in 10 people are going to have either Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease or a form of dementia, okay? Over the age of 85, you get to 1 in 3. Here, you're 1 in 2, okay? So we're going to see a growing burden in terms of these non-communicable age-related diseases, these diseases of aging, especially of survivors, okay? And... Um, it's not just us, it's worldwide. You know, we look at Africa right here. Um, they're, they're, you know, making major advances, okay, and they're not ready, all right. Um, in terms of world population, you guys are going to learn, okay. So, so um, uh, the most populous country in the world right now is China. Uh, India is going to surpass them in 2025, okay. And in 2060, Nigeria will be the most populous country in the world. And we're going to have some major issues there. So we're looking for you guys to go over to these countries and solve these issues. Okay. Um, I keep talking about these different types of diseases. Okay. So um, we look at the transition from 2002 to 2030 in, say, Japan or the United States. Okay. And we're looking at what types of diseases they're, they're indicated right here. All right. So we see that. Um, communicable diseases, okay, these are infections, viral, bacterial, fungal, um, uh, poor uh, maternal care, um, poor perinatal care, uh, nutritional problems, okay, these are the green ones right here, and we've gone from 6% to 3% um, affecting the population in terms of, of, of the, the uh, burden of these diseases, okay. Injuries, again, safeguards going down, then we come over here to low and middle income countries and you see that um, that they um, have this burden of these infectious diseases, but they're transitioning. And that's the point, they're transitioning to these chronic diseases, okay? 
Alrighty. So we're, we see in countries that are adopting, okay, like, like uh, South Korea, like France, like Italy, uh, like Japan, that there's this democratic shift, okay? Um, you're not seeing a replacement, okay, in the population. And it's pretty dramatic, okay? So like I brought up these countries, okay? Uh, Germany, Italy, Spain, declines in the population, okay? That's because of a drop in fertility rate. This is a, this is a huge issue, okay? And we're going to look at Russia. Russia just jumps out at you. Look at the decline in the, their population. Okay. Um, so we can look at Russia, okay? And we can ask ourselves, um, who's making up that population? If it's declining, we, we said people were living longer. And so there's actually this this projected uh, positivity, okay, of numbers, this increase in numbers of people going from 2006 to 2030 that are going to be um, 60 to 64, uh, 75 to 79. You see, the people um, during this time are going to stay in place, and it's going to make up a much bigger percentage of the population, okay? You see this in contrast that the younger age groups are going down in numbers, okay? Because of lower fertility and immigration, people are getting the heck out of Russia, okay? So they're up, they're, they're in for serious problems when you look at that dynamic, uh, sociologically, economically. All righty. So that, my friends, is where I'm going to end. Um, so um, we're going to transition to this for the, for the next uh, uh, lecture. All right, so we see here we went from forward through trend five, okay? Um, you then get in here and you can um, uh, do the readings quiz. What you wish you do is have the quiz open and at the same time in the second part of your browser have this chapter open. You just go back and forth and back and forth, okay? Um, I'll, I will tell you that we have a large pool of questions for every quiz, you know, between 20 and 25 questions. So it'll be pretty random. Um, what one person will get versus the other. Okay, get in there. You can check out my video from a while back showing me being a surfer. It's kind of fun. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, that is how this is going to roll. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video, and we'll see you next time.